My dream is to be the leading uh, specialty coffee producer. Today we are visiting the stunning Sipi Falls on Mount Elgon in eastern Uganda and we are very excited to introduce coffee farmer Joel Kaburu. Hey Joel. Hello Wiles, you're welcome to Joel's coffee processing facility. Thank you. Joel is one of the most passionate and ambitious coffee farmers we have ever met. His dedication and desire to learn, experiment and develop is inspiring. Today he will show us what makes his coffee unique. All the way from the first stage of processing, his freshly harvested coffee cherries. The coffees are in four categories. We have uh, the green coffee, we have the red coffee, we have the yellows, and we have sometimes the, the overripes. So when they are in four categories, it is my role to separate all of them. Because for specialty coffee, I look at only the red cherries. What we are looking for are floaters, and floaters are mainly those coffees that have been damaged by insects, or sometimes the overripe coffee that dries from the tree. They have already lost, lost water and they are very light, so they come on top. Because if you go critically, you'll find that mostly what comes on top, they have holes. So we process them separately. We put the floaters there, Then after that, we pour them here. What we are looking mainly here are the red cherries. So after it has been separated, so it goes to the hulling machine. The huller is a machine that separates the coffee beans from the outer fruit layer, called the coffee pulp. The beans are now covered with a sticky sugar substance called the mucilage. And the mucilage now is right here is a hundred percent. So the processing or the drying method will give you how much uh, mucilage remains in the coffee cherry. This is where the secret to the next step of the process lies by following a very elaborate drying and fermentation process with the mucilage still covering the beans Joel carefully prepares so-called honey processed coffee the honey process you just transfer the same pulp cherries direct to a table like this then you keep on uh, turning if i want to make yellow honey coffee needs enough exposure of sunshine. That's why the sugar mucile comes to around 25. Then I need red, I have to leave it up to 50%. Then what is key is how often do you turn them? You think drying the coffee is the easy part? You couldn't be more wrong. This is when the job really starts. From morning hours to around 10. So I just spread in that layer, whatever it is. Then from 10 to midday, you keep turning them. Then they are heaped. When they are heaped, you give it time like 15 minutes. You come and turn them again. You spray them. You go out for another 15 minutes. You come back again. Then from midday to three, they are, they are, they are heaped. In a, in a mount, you leave them in the, because the reason is of heaping it is it is too hot and you don't need that sunshine to take away all the evaporation of the mucilage. All this makes honey processed coffee take at least three times longer to produce compared to conventional washed coffee. This is like too much, it's too much work. <laughs> all this comes because of our passion, but because I love what I'm doing, I prefer making that small volume, so it depends on who is your target customer and what you like to do in the field. So it's about passion. It is about the passion that someone has. Mm. 
As Sipi Falls is a popular tourist destination, it was actually the tourists that led Joel onto his coffee journey. Actually, I started in uh, 2003 as a tour guide. I was taking some clients from UK and we reached at one of the coffee trees that had cherries. They asked me how we make coffee locally. So I took them home. We process coffee in a traditional way and they picked much interest. They even bought some uh, roasted coffee. <laughs> Joel quickly realized that the key to success in coffee is to do more than just growing the coffee. To further expand on his coffee business, Joel now has his own coffee shop in Sipi. So this is Arabica coffee from the slopes of uh, Mount Elagon. So after pouring, I have to steer it. Eh? We mainly put this coffee shop to impact the community. So we are trying to change the mindset of the community by preparing for them and taste their own coffee from their farms. Like if you want to add something in it, can you, can you do that? Like something? Normally it depends if you want to take uh, without sugar or with sugar. But most coffee drinkers, they just take without sugar. Okay, yeah. <laughs> prefer the sugar. I may not be making a lot of profits, but I want to show them or to, for them to taste their own coffee and start consuming coffee locally. Because in Uganda, we normally sell almost 95% of the coffees and we only consume 5%. What you are taking now is uh, honey coffee. We have uh, washed coffee, natural coffee, and this is honey coffee. Yeah, there's no coffee as plain. Like, <laughs> this coffee. Yeah, yeah. A lot has changed in the coffee industry since Joel started, but one thing remains the same, the coffee prices. If I take you back briefly, I think I may be biased to talk about companies. I will not talk about any coffee company here. But some companies came back way back in the 90s and they were buying a kilo of parchment at 5,000. From 99 up to now, they are starting to buy coffee at the same price of uh, 5,000, that's why you find like for us to come out into the market is to try to process it differently. The only way to get a better price for your coffee is to produce higher quality if you find a buyer willing to pay for it. You are looking at the cup score and if you have a good cup score then you'll have to negotiate for the price. We look for direct trade then we can negotiate for our own uh, prices. But the profit I get, however small it is, it is still motivating me until we come into direct conversation with the buyers because we are all in business and everyone wants to make a, a profit. Yeah. Yes. The end result of Joel's hard work and meticulous processing is coffee that is hardly found anywhere else in Uganda. You know, the market industry, the trend is changing. Customers are coming with different tastes and preferences. So every season, when the season starts, you also experiment. For instance, an uh, anaerobic process for three days. You also extend it for four days, five days, and later you cap and you see the cap score, uh, scores compared to the one that you ferment for three days. So every day there is room for research and looking for new different uh, results after cupping the coffee. That's why I try different uh, coffee processing methods. One of my dreams is to be the leading uh, specialty coffee producer and I will look at in future to have right from the farm to processing and uh, roasting, packaging and sell it as a final product because this will come back to the farmers. We are really happy to be partnering with farmers like Joel. We hope we can help him reach a far wider audience with his excellent coffee. Fully processed and roasted at source, Joel's passion and drive should be a great inspiration for other African coffee farmers.